own room today. I've been talking with a
here today. Yes. So we need to worship him. Yes. We need to give him the glory. Yes. We need to lift him up. Amen. Because he's worthy. Yes. Let's give him up. Uh, minister, Pastor Kian, workers on the rascal. There is a lot of great scheme, missionary, um, Pastor Michel, Sister Michel, the Spirit of Jesus. You know, we greet you all in the name of Jesus. Our soon coming King, the Spirit of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. You know, we. we this month we are celebrating our family months. You know, and to, to say the word family, we are talking about. We are not talking about blood. Not only blood alone. We are talking about the family. We are talking about the family of God. That's the name of Jesus. And we are just seeing a while ago that we are so happy to be a part of the family of God. And this is the greatest family now. So we need to try and, and, and be a part of this family. Yes. That's the name of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. You know, I, want to, I want to start off this part of the service by singing in 90 at Calvary. That's the name of Jesus. So I want to turn it to the name of the name of the
Let us worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us go ahead and go ahead. Almighty God and everlasting Father, Lord, we approach your mercy for one more time. Father, we give you thanks for the Sabbath morning. So enter into your courts with thanksgiving. Lord, this morning, Lord, we thank you for each and every one of us. Father, we are inviting your presence in our midst right now. Father, we ask you to wash us and cleanse us, mighty God. Lord, this moment, Lord, we put our divine service before you. Lord, we have you to ask you to lead and direct, mighty God. Father, take one who's going to speak important word. I pray, dear God, that you bless such a one. Bless an abundant, dear God, for we need to hear from you today. Father, without you, we are nothing. So we need you today, Lord. So we are inviting you among us, mighty God. Father, I pray this moment, God, that you take one who's moderating in charge. Father, I pray you, you cover him under your blood right now. Lord, whatever we fail of asking you today, I pray dear God that you grant it unto us. Have your own sweet divine will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. We worship the name of the Lord. Can somebody just extend your arm and room and give God a praise? Can somebody just extend your arm and room and give God a praise? I know God has been working in somebody's life that can even stand on your feet and shout a praise for God. Can somebody just stand on your feet and shout a praise for God? Can somebody just stand on your feet and shout a praise for God? Thank you. 
keep God worship. Amen. Amen.
God bless you, the name of the Lord, man. In Jamaican language, the man attacked me with a machine. And God allowed me to see him coming because the, the dust came down and he was crossing the road with the machine in his hand. And I saw, I just glimpsed the machine. And brethren, foolish me, decided that I was going to hold it. Even if it chucked it, I'm going to hold it and kill it. <laughs> Because all I was thinking is my blood spilling, and that was scary to me. So I decided that since this man went, you know, threatened my life, I'm going to hold him. And quite a bit of people killed him women, men, and children because it was his community killed, backing him, and urging him on. And I said, if there's even 50 of them, they couldn't take me off of him. That's how I was thinking. The lion instinct stepped in, and I, I personally almost killed him. And when I hit him with the first blow and the machine fall, I heard something in my head saying, Kill him. And if you look at me, I am just as I was before. I don't fight. I don't consider myself a wicked man. Anybody who would have known me from a young man coming up, I was a bright Sabbath school. You know, remember as a young boy, never gave over my life completely to the Lord, always calm and humble. Uh, something was telling me to kill him. And for some reason he felt that he was in danger of dying. And he flee away from me. But the next thing you know, he ran into my brother's arm. That's why I didn't see that he was about to see hold of me. But God had another plan. Because he run out of one man when present and he a man arms. He was just coming and he took over and saw me in the ring, wrestling with him. And when he ran away from me and ran to him, I mean, he was just going away. He ran straight to my brother and he was just coming. So I don't know, he just ran straight to him and he held me. And with one and across him back. And he looked down in the ring at me and he said, You're alright? And I said, Yeah, man, kill him! However, the man who gave him the machine, they fired me. And my brother was in a good mood. So he releases him. Hence, we didn't end up in prison. God bless the name of Jesus. When God has a plan for your life, which He has for all of us, life, the devil cannot thwart God's plan. No matter what He does, He cannot thwart God's plan. Why? Because He's God. God bless in the name of the Lord. He's God Almighty. And today I'm standing here, you know, after. Check from 1991 till now, I've accepted the Lord. It has not been an easy road. In fact, God, missionary being and he can be in the city and the poor there with me today. They can tell you sometime after this. If you choose to ask them, it has not been easy. Now, bless the name of the Lord. It has not been an easy road for me from the start. Joel, my daughter, sitting here and it being for the devil alone she would not have been here because even doctors said we wouldn't have any children together and we have lost many we could all the children that have lost we could keep a church alone <laughs> because there were twins in the midst and the doctors told my wife and she hid it from me that we wouldn't have any children. After he the same man said, hey, you're going to have this baby. And that one born alive like seven years before she came. The same doctor turned around and told her that we are not going to have any children. Look at this beautiful girl. God bless the name of the Lord. I say all this now to help you to understand that 
If God has done it for me, it's not because I'm special. But if he has done it for me, he can do it for you. I heard the moderator saying that no matter what your problem is, he can do it. When I was about to give up, the Lord healed her. And when the doctor started to tell her foolishness, I personally reminded her of the night when she got healed. Remember, God never said anything to me, but I believe that she had gotten the healing that night. And I said, look here, tell them your husband said to leave you alone. And they left her from that day. There is true God uh, bless her in the name of the Lord. Uh, 2016, she insists upon me that she wants to be baptized. I explained to her what it is all about. She said she wants to do it. No. I was going to be her for a few months. And she has given her life to the Lord. That was my hope and dream for her. Appearances parents you have your children. We are in family month. In the Church of God Seventh Day in Jamaica Conference, March is designated as Family Month. This is the first Sabbath in March, and the focus are to be on the family. But it's very important that we raise our children well, grow them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That is not just a saying, but it's a responsibility for us as parents. The ills that we're having in our society today are caused by bad parenting. And I pause so that that can soak in. Many of us are still as parents. When you see your children decide to give their life to the Lord, you should be encouraging them. So therefore, don't discourage them. Let them go forward because God brought them on this earth, hallelujah, for a purpose, just as he had brought you for a purpose. And he said, there is heritage. They belongs to him. Let God have his way with your children. So during this family month, invite your family that are not coming to church. If you have a big son, who used to go to church when he was smaller, a daughter, but saw men drift away from the Lord. Encourage them. Invite them out to church this month. It might be the day that they be saved. If you have an unsaved spouse, invite them to church. If you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, and you are in church today, invite them out to church. It might just be that, that day that they come along, it is the day when they will hear a word that will save their souls from hell. So I want to greet everybody in this family one to the mighty name of Jesus. We are one family. We are not, we may not be blood related, but we are one family in Christ Jesus, a chosen generation. The royal priesthood, a holy nation, a blessed in the name of Jesus. So today, we are going to celebrate. We are going to talk about, we have brethren from far and near. I understand we have visitors from abroad, the folks who are watching us on social media live, and we'll see this program afterward. We greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus, our soon coming King, the community of Shooters in and all who are here in the reach of our voice. We greet you. It is supper time, dinner time, lunch time, depending on when you shall have your meal. It is time when the Lord shall feed us if we come to the table for bread. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. I want to say greetings to Sister Mitchell and the family of Pastor Mitchell. He's on vacation, my dear God. Someday. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worshiping today in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the New Beginning Church of God Seventh Day. And I'm sure. 
that you will not miss anything because it is what you put in that you get out. If you worship the Lord, then the blessings of God will come down. I want to bring to our new converts. Yes. Messed up. All we need to do is go under. 
under the fountain. That fountain of blood allow ourselves to be washed and to be made clean. They made righteous. Move her again. So that when he shall come, we might go in with him the groom. So the sheep speaking of our brethren is the church universal. I bless in the name of the Lord. In other words, God's people. The sheep is right. You know the royal family. To whom much is given, much is expected. You can't live any and any home. You can't go any and any place. My minister used to say that you might be hiding and going somewhere to do something, but God will set up somebody to see you. You are paparazzi. Oh, you're watching. God's people, they are the first one to say, oh, he or she said they are Christian and they are living and you are doing, even if what you are doing on the loop and in a strange way and according to their culture and understanding they think that Christians shouldn't be doing it, they are going to criticize you. So what does that tell you? You are a peculiar people, a blessed name of the Lord. You are special. A royal priesthood. A royal family of priests. Oh, glory to God. Revelation 5. In the verse 10, near about down to 12, 14, he said that we, and if you believe it, we, he said, shall reign with Christ as who? Kings and priests upon the earth. And that's the name of the Lord. So he said, kings. And this wasn't coming from me. We are royal. Do you believe that you are royalty? Amen. We should live as royalty. Amen. And bless the name of the Lord. It might be that you think that you don't have a good bed to sleep in. Your roof might be leaking. You probably can't put in your floor yet. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You might be barely scraping to put food on your table. You have dreams and aspirations that you're not able to fulfill because it costs money. And your finance is not where it is supposed to be. But regardless of that, you might be suffering, as the moderator said, in some sicknesses and wondering why me, Lord. How is it that this is happening to me, a child of the king? But you are right. You are a part of a greater body. As the scripture declares that his children, they are one body made up of different members. But according to the scripture text, it said, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I want to help you to understand that there is a text in the Bible in Ephesians that said, Jesus is the first who shall resurrect or was resurrected a particular way. And what I mean is that he's resurrected and he's still alive. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. At his resurrection, there were some people who was raised from the dead, but they died afterward. He himself rose Lazarus from the dead. He died afterward. The apostles, some of them, bring back people from the dead. They die afterward. Jesus is the only example we have who rose from the dead. And he's still alive. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Still alive. So he's a brother, according to Romans 8. And reading from the verse 28, I'm quoting from the verse 28. He said, For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, 
and to all those who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did know before, he predestined to be what? A blessed name of the Lord. Whom he did know before, he predestined to be called. In my own words, the brother of Jesus Christ. A blessed name of the Lord. He being the first fruit that brings from the dead. So you must understand that you are first. You must have second, third, going down the line. So on that day, if we die, we are going to resurrect from the dead if we die in Christ. To be with Jesus Christ. As one that will follow after E the example. If we are alive at that time, if he should come to be, then we shall be changed also in a moment in the twinkling of an eye from mortal to immortality. But we are special people. We should live like special people. We are royalty. We didn't get it from Paris right. He got it from us. And he was speaking about a beautiful lady. One that has a place in his heart. But we are talking about the church of the living God. But with the blood of Jesus, a blessed in the name of the Lord, we are the church. So when Peter saw what was happening in the church, when he looked and saw royalty living in malice and strife and envy and hypocrisy, of glory to God, the man said, Look, you don't you know who you are? You are royalty. Just as Jesus came to her and he was a living stone. And what he was doing is using the example of a building. For in those days, what they would use to build building was stones. Because in Jerusalem culture, there's a lot of stones. So they make use of the stones. As you read the Bible, you notice they used to talk about stoning people to death. Because it was easy to find stones. So they used stones to build the houses. So Peter used that example. And he said, look here, Jesus was a living stone. But he was talking about she, the woman, the bride, the church. He said, Jesus. He came to her as a living stone. And you, brethren, you are living stones. A blessed in the name of the Lord. And he went on to say, you're living stones that build up a spiritual house. house. And I want to repeat that. A spiritual house. A blessed in the name of the Lord. So it's not a physical building. We love to refer to this as a church. But the church is universal. All over the world. Wherever you may go. People who have accepted Jesus Christ. The gift that he has given on the cross at Calvary. You know, shed his blood and you have accepted it. You are a part of this great body, this great building. This spiritual building. He said you are built up. So you are one soul. That build this vast building, this vast body, the body of Christ. Oh, glory to God. But there is no place for the things that contaminate the body. Oh, glory to God. There is no place. There was none in Peter's time. It became so apparent to him that he had to deal with this situation. He could not have gone in person. So he wrote them a letter. And he said, look here. Man shouldn't be among you. Envy which is wickedness shouldn't be among you. Hypocrisy shouldn't be among you. For what those things does is destroy the body. A blessed be the name of the Lord. So I don't know if there might be someone you know that when you say you don't feel so pleased. 
you develop an ill feeling in your heart. He spoke about slander. And I want to help us to understand that you cannot slander somebody unless you manifest them. What is slander, by the way? Slander is speaking bad things about somebody to let them look smaller than they really is. To tear them down to the ground. So if you find yourself speaking evil and quick to run with evil news about an individual, don't deceive yourself. But that's what the text said. Put aside guy. Guy is a kind of deception that you use your mouth to do to others, to deceive them. But in this case, don't allow yourself to be deceived, to think that you don't have malice. If you found yourself slandering, I bless in the name of the Lord. I'm in church long enough to know that just as in Peter's day, people, sometimes pastor they come to me. But the pastor is not the type of person who loves to take their news. And you know, when I come to him, when they go to somebody else, and eventually many times it reaches past his ears. You know, that's some slandering going on. The people are in the same church, they worship at the same place. But there are ill feelings that people take in their bosom toward their brethren. But let me tell you something the danger in that brethren. But I want to quote a text first. It's in the book of Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs chapter 6. I can't remember the verse right now. Where it says, Six things the Lord in, but the seven, hallelujah, look that carefully, the seven is an abomination unto God. Six things. The Lord eat. So he eaten seven things really. But the writer, I mean, he took out number seven because it was important for him to stress number seven. He said the seven is an abomination to God. And what the seven is? He said, brethren who saw this God among brethren. This guy in simple terms is a total opposite of accordance, unity, working together. Now you look at the priest, Steve, you know, the restaurant party, the musician. You can imagine if this guy is up here. We would not have any worship. You see, this guy in this little machine, there is no fix in the name of Jesus. And in that being that we know, say, I am not really a worship God. We would not have any worship today. This guy, I bless in the name of Jesus. Everything I work out all right. I glory to God. So God eat that sedition. That caused division, a blessing in the name of the Lord, among God's people. So Peter said, like human beings, what you should be doing is desiring the sincere word of the Lord. And not promoting guile, hypocrisy, envy, malice, and slander. All of them are connected. A blessed the name of the Lord. I want to tell you that in some people's eyes and even mine, those things are so dangerous to me more deadly than those that are in the Ten Commandments. And let me tell you, you see one of the ten that God said you shouldn't do? Even though you sin against your brethren and half of them, 
approximately. And in the other half, you sin against God. But you said these that Peter mentioned here, if you want a church, mush up. If you want the body of Christ, all glory to God, you're going to walk in and you are feeling healthy and strong. And all of a sudden, you are feeling dead. And they took you to the doctor, or you just decided to get a checkup. Or for some reason, you probably feel a little dizziness. Or you feel like your body not functioning as it's supposed to be. And you say you want to go to the doctor. And all of a sudden, after the doctor runs some tests, you heard that you are suffering from a terminal disease. You know the state that can be. We have seen it happen among us as a people. We have lost loved ones who went away that way. My mother was watching the news, feeling empty and strong. When the look they saw her, powerful woman of God with her head bowed over. And when they went to her and they shook her and said, walk to you, she said she feel like something in her in her head. The result of that strong healthy woman used to work to help to support her children. Used to run the church. The result of that was she got a stroke. And it was so bad, a blood vessel burst in her head. She lived a few days and then she died. Well, let me tell you, malice, envy, hypocrisy. <laughs> oh, glory to God. God those that Peter said we should lay aside. Hallelujah. Take them off. Lay them aside. They operated the seal into the body of Christ. Something was going on in our body long ago. The regulation of the blood flow was all right. That is what those things do in the spiritual body of Christ. And eventually, suddenly, one day, boom, she got a hit in the head. My mother was no more. I was devastated. I didn't think she could have died. At that time, I was the only one who didn't give my life to the Lord of our six. And I wasn't enjoying life because I know my mother. This man is doing anything my mother would have prayed for. I say I used to say this that suddenly as we are growing as a church in Shooters Hill and God gave us a mandate as ministers of his he said preach the word in season and out of season so let me tell you something I don't hear none I don't know if any man is going on I don't know if anything happening among us but when God brought the word to me, I thought to myself that the Spirit of God probably is proactive because I've seen churches grow and churches grow up and then they grow down. So we are growing in truth as if we are having a good time. I bless in the name of the Lord. The enemy is not pleased. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, he's not pleased. Let us not be an instrument of his to destroy the work of God. A child of God should be selfless, not selfish. So especially to our young converts, your person going to do you some things. Hallelujah. You're going to get hurt. Sometimes it's not intentional. But you take it seriously. I started out by saying that 
The family is important to our society. I read in the Observer where the justice, justice site, our chief justice, he was giving a speech somewhere and he said that the probation officers and parents have a great role to play in bringing down the crime in our island home. We have boys who grew up without fathers. And so the father figure was not the son of the father, but the father is just a sperm donor. Sometimes the father is in the house, but he don't really care. So the most of the burden is left on the woman, the female. As we focus on an healthy family, you know, and an healthy lifestyle in this family model. I want to say to us in Shutazil that let us take the initiative to grow our children right. And let us not only grow our own children. We who are good fathers in the church and outside of the church, let us look out for, especially the young boys, the young boys on the street, let us be a mentor and a guide to them. Because, brethren, it will be a sad day if it turns out that we ignore them. And one of them became a murderer, God forbid. And killed one of us, God forbid. And we came back to life, that God forbid that. And we saw that we could have done something to stop them. A young man from becoming a murderer. If you have children, you can't live for your children alone. You know why I'm speaking it plain and straight. Have you ever heard of boys and girls killing their peers in school? In their community? Young boys stop and then a young boy to death. I use those examples to tell you that probably somebody was mentoring that child. And probably that mentor could have been the victim's father. Just think about it. A blessed the name of the Lord. So we are not called to be selfless. The fact of the matter, if you mentor a young boy as a man of God, a man who has accepted the Lord, he might very well see you as a role model and walk the walk that you are walking today. A blessed the name of the Lord. You will not only see him from prison, but you could see the soul from death and hell. He too could make a narrow escape. Just the same for our young woman. Let us mentally young. It is no joke when they say that it takes a village to raise a child. Because when the child goes out of the presence of their parent, they are in somebody else's presence in the village of blessed the name of the Lord. And no things are time changing. But that is no excuse to say that the easy road and talk about me not trouble nobody pick me. Because we don't want them to come post me. We are securing our community, our village, our homeland, and the future of our children and grandchildren. God bless the name of the Lord. If you plan to live in this topic, we have to do something to help to make it right. We can't just feel comfortable that we are safe. And so therefore, we are killed by nobody else. I will only see if they want to get out and kill up. That is not love. God bless in the name of the Lord. We are a royalty, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people. Who's supposed to act? And we are not just special. We are special to God. In other words, we are special in God's eyes. 
So young girls, especially those of you who have given your life to the Lord, and for those who haven't given your life, if your parents reject you, if you never receive any father in law, or any mother in law, and you develop a low self-esteem, hallelujah, you begin to feel like nobody wants you. For many times of a young girl, they destroy their lives by listening to guy deceptive voices of young men and old men telling them that they love them and how beautiful they are. A deal does not pass that I don't tell my daughter I love her. A morning does not pass. And a week day she's going to school that she don't come kiss her father. That was an example set by me when she was this small. And now she's the one who come to kiss me every morning and I love you daddy. I sorry for the man who's going to be her husband if you don't know her love. You're in problem. But if you are a young girl and you didn't get that type of love from your father, the fact of the matter is that some fathers abuse their daughters. They should be protecting them. Many of them are walking around with scars of sexual abuse from their fathers and uncles and cousins. But sometimes brethren, when we see them come in the church and they are having problems, mothers in Zion and elders in Zion don't criticize them. For God's sake, try to meet friends with them, reason with them, and see if you can find out what is happening in their lives. Many a times they need counseling, they need direction. A blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. We have a responsibility. We are a special set of people. And if, this is where I was going, if the rest of the world is not doing it, it is the responsibility of the church. This peculiar people, this God-loving people, who express or should be the love of God from their heart. We should make the society better. We should be doing more. So we are the slandering come from among us. So you eat the young girl with, and you begin to walk around and talk about her and spread the things that she gets involved in. It should not be so. Peter said, lay it at the side. If you keep that hope, we don't mind in the church anyway. A blessing in the name of the Lord. Brother struggling. You criticize the brother. After a while, I'm a silly brother. No slander. We do it with our children. As we're talking about the family, we do it with our children at home. We are quick to point out the wrongs that they do. But we fail. We fail to encourage them by commending them about the good things that they do. So many times it is a way that we approach a situation. Instead of saying, you know, look here. I like that what you did over there, but you couldn't do a little improvement and that picture do over there. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. No. A big old picture like you. A big old girl like you. No more hope to this. And all if you just frustrate me. You get back up on my brain. You put a dust dead out of my sight. <laughs> Many of the parents that you hear come on television and crying and go, Oh, Jody, come home. What I want is make me work it out. Just come back home. They are the ones that cause your children to leave the home. Focus on the positive thing. It is the same thing in the church. The system.
sister can see, but she has a problem. Talk about the good things. I encourage her to look here. You're a minister for God. Build a ministry. Walk with God. Perfect little daughter. A blessing in the name of the Lord. Too many times I've witnessed it in my 28 years of Christendom. And as a young man who grew in the church, I miss the conversation. People, they criticize these young girls when they start to go astray and young men and they throw them out of the church. They isolate them. They discriminate against them. They can't be not in a church. So if you are going to church, and I'm not even going to sleep. Then I don't know anything. Then why do I call? I don't know why I'm speaking all these things. But we are a royal prison. A holy nation. A peculiar people. And we are called upon to declare the praises. Hallelujah. So what I was saying earlier on is that if you're not practicing for your you can't practice it at church. So if you don't practice to eat for praises and your children, let them feel special. You know what? Come to church, don't do it with my child. Where do I encourage? Look here. Jesus said, Come as you are. He didn't need all any stipulation for you to come to him. But we are so wicked. We have stipulation. So if you're not walk right, you can't get my praise. If you don't do the right thing, when you want to, if you do no matter what I school you do, you can't get my praise. Stipulation. Jesus called us when we were deep in sin and even know why we are in him. We still sin and come short of his glory. But he has not rejected us. He really don't know stipulation. If we call him, see him, we answer. The Bible said he answer long before we call. Oh, glory to God. But we lay down stipulations. Well, from today and we're pregnant. You probably didn't know this. You probably were, you, you probably had the need to be reminded of this. Wherever you are today, you are a royal priesthood. So all that you heard me mention have to do with the priests. We are a people of priests, a family of priests. And we offer prayer. We're not supposed to ask if we pray for you to pray for me. We are a family of priests. So when you go to pray, you pray about yourself alone and that's it. Or if somebody else asks you to pray. We offer spiritual sacrifice in the house of the Lord. Whatever I'm doing right now, I'm offering spiritual profit. I mean sacrifice. Oh, glory to God. Holy nation. God made us righteous and we are to walk in the path of holiness. Oh, glory to God. For we are a holy nation. A peculiar people, a special people. Oh, glory to God. And it's good. Show forth. That is what we are called for. Oh, you show the praises. The thing is, he was speaking about you just lifting up your hands and saying, Praise the Lord. The praises that you show forth is that the life that you lived, the things that you heard the speak about earlier on, the things that you do that are Christ like. That is what the showing for the praises mean. Because you are showing that Jesus saved you. And you are doing this because you are saved. She is royal. We in the church of the living God. We are the royal bride of Christ. He's coming back again. And he's coming back for his bride. Let us live as if we are expecting to meet God when He comes. Just think about this. Some people are going to run away from His presence at His coming. But we 
are to be the ones running toward a blessed in the name of the Lord. If there is anything in your life become sharp that you think would cause you to run away from it, then you need to meet the change in your life, the turn. Especially if you are unseen. I want to tell you that we will not preach, stop preaching the gospel from this podium. As long as there is breath in my body, I will not stop encouraging you to give your life to the Lord of God and see it. We know we can't force you. We want to give you the opportunity. Because salvation is what you need. If you think you don't need it right now, it would be very sad for you to wait until you can prove that you're going to need it. Because the Lord said, look here, on that day, those who are not in Christ, they will run to the rocks and the mountain. And those rocks and mountain will be saying, I'm here to come to the They are not so much here right now. Let us not wait until it's too late. Let us give our lives completely to God. He's the one who gave us life. Let him take care of our lives. Be a part of this royal family. Because it pays off in the end. The Bible says we shall live and reign with him as kings and priests on the earth. Lay aside all the things that are not of God. And take up the mantle. Father, walk in the example of Jesus Christ. Show for his praises that others may see and be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, 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 come Bring forth this message. We believe you are a royalty. Yes. In the name of Jesus. You are a chosen generation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are just going to move on. Um, I want you to turn the back to the email to 3 or 4. Deeper, deeper.
as they go through their hard years. My God, they might be feeling as if they have gone far from me. Lord, they might not be feeling your touch and your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But my God, I pray at this hour that that feeling, that spirit, will be discharged in the name of Jesus. I pray you grant them a visitation, a fresh visitation. Let them be still and know that you are God. Let them understand, the Lord, that even when they are feeling far from thee, your mark is upon them, and you are their children. Comfort your people, just now I commit them into your care. Remember those who didn't come to the altar, but they're having their fear, share of problem and difficulties. I commit them into your care. Bless the Lord. Remember those, my God, like sheep who have gone astray from thee, have slipped from thee. Those who have given their lives to thee as yet. I commit them into your care. They are living in Japan. We are living in danger. And I pray, Lord, that you will extend your hand of mercy. And you will shine the light of salvation into their hearts. So that they will understand, I mean, accept this wonderful gift that you have given on the cross at Calvary's cross. Calvary for them. I commit them into your care. I commit, my God, to shoot us in church, brethren. And what we do here into your hands this hour. We pray a special anointing continually upon the praise team, the musicians, and those, my God, whom you use from time to time to usher the path and to minister unto us your people. Let none, my God, go away today without a blessing in your hearts. Commit your children into your care and tell thanks for a wonderful day in your presence. We pray for those mighty God who are watching us live. Dear Lord and Facebook and on the other social media. We commit them into your care they to have their needs. We are praying, Lord, that as they reach out to you just now, in their request for prayer, that you will fulfill your need for your God and you are able to do all things. We declare, my God, the victory, the healing, deliverance over their lives right now. We tell you thanks. We pray for Pastor Mitchell. My God, who wherever he is today, I know that he's worshiping you. Whatever, my God, he is dealing with, as he crossed the waters today, I pray, Lord, that you will make it prosperous and successful. You have been, my God, to have a good time and to come back to us, bless the Lord, in one peace and in good health, stronger than before. But bless the Lord to continue the work that you have ordained in you. I pray for Brother Dave as we close this hour. Hallelujah. He was here this morning. And Lord Jesus, wherever he are, he is at this hour. I commit him into your care. I have wandered far away from thee. Take contact. 
depart from the knowledge. In the name of Jesus. We declare a beach. We declare healing. We declare freedom. In the name of Jesus. Covering under your blood.
Because we believe that this kingdom can help someone out of their spiritual depths that they have fallen and can see somebody in the long run. So we say thank you for watching. We greet you in the name of Jesus. A blessed in the name of the Lord. They can be missionary team, the prayers team, the musician, and all the official department and all who have taken part, the cameraman who stood in for us today. And we thank you and may you continue to work for the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. We are going to descend the podium and we trust that we can meet and greet at the entrance of the door.